Okay. And did um did we so who started the broadcast? There we go. Dorothy did. Did I? I think so. <laughs> so I didn't hear you know it. anything. Not intentionally. I think you've started. So for everybody on the phone, um, we wanted to let you know that we are having some challenges. Unfortunately, um, our person who was going to run through the demo, Monica, could not access the um, the meeting invite. She's having some computer problems. And so Dorothy is going to jump in here for us and start the process and do the demo for us. So thank you guys for um, joining and we apologize. It might be just a little bit uh, clunky at first, but we'll get going here. Um, and uh, we will record this for, for everybody who couldn't attend and get this sent out to you as well. So Dorothy, do you wanna take it from here? Okay. Um... Just to start with, I have no idea how to use GoToMeeting. So how do I present my screen? Okay, hold on. I've never used it. <laughs> Dorothy, you should see a side panel bar that you can expand and there's a show screen on I there. See that. And it says show screen. And I click it and nothing happens. Because maybe you're not, oh no, you're the presenter though. Uh, okay, hold on. Here's another option, you guys. We could um, send out a Google link and and do it that way. It seems that there is an option to make Dorothy the presenter. Okay, I have been made the presenter. Now I can do this. So what can you now see? I can see? Yeah, I can see your screen. Can you see the lightning screen? I no. see a fall tree screen, Dorothy. How do I change it to the lightning screen? Uh, good okay, so I found it. I found it. Um, tell me when you see lightning. You see lightning? Yes, I yes. see lightning. Uh, mm -hmm. whew, that was crazy. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I have to pit, open up my little cheat. Here, that's not it. Um, so I know which programs to demo. Alrighty then. Okay, so as you can see, lightning looks a lot different. Um, but hopefully it'll be a better user experience for everyone. So what I'll do first is I'll go to a level one and I'll go through the process as the program user. And for most of the users on our call, they won't see this. Um, they're mostly going to see that front portion that Dorothy is just about, is going to be showing us here shortly, so. Right. Okay. So right now I'm logging in as the program user. And this is the new um, QRS portal. So as you can see here, you can make, if you're, if you come in, you, you look at this homepage, you can see, um, information about the program over here their quality rating process uh, progress so there's everybody's obviously a level one when they start out um, and they can this program's eligible to apply for a level two or an alternative pathway or if they don't want to um, apply they can update their program details and click any of these links. And once you click one of the links on the quick updates, 
you can access them all here without going back to the home screen, which is right there. Um, so I'll, I'm going to start a new level two application. So there's two ways to get there. You can click this button here and say start new application, or you can click this button over on the left and it shows all of the applications as well as you know, application history if you've if the program has had previous um, ratings done and whether or not they have a uh, rating available for review. That'll show up here if they've submitted it and it's being reviewed or they need to review it. And then this would be applications in progress. So I'm gonna start with a level two application. And here's this message and it says, you know if you need help and it has some contact numbers here's the contact for the council here's the help desk number um, and email and here's the pdis help desk email address so you click the x to get out of there and i just want to remind everybody dorothy just a second go ahead that we are in test mode still and there's a few tweaks we're still making to this some of the language and as you saw that email that that phone number on that previous page where she said the council was just, it, that it'll actually have your council name and everything in there too. So um, just so everybody's aware of that. Okay. Um, so on the left side here, you see the steps of the application. So you'll see these little dots, they'll be orange when you're on that page and then they'll turn green as they're completed. And if there are any issues, um, like you've missed a field or something, it'll give you a message here. Um, so on this one, I see this little red asterisk, so that means I need to edit that. So I'm gonna say this program's for profit. If I have any other languages, I can put them here. And then I can check um, any of these um, programs that they're receiving. Um, funding for or providing assistance with. So I'm gonna just click private pay there. And this will be a year round program. So I'm gonna say year round, but I'm gonna say I don't accept part-time students. And in this case, you can you can either click, click the individual days and put the times in, or you can click this Monday through Friday box and put the time in here. And it's really important that you, rather than type in the time, that you put in, select the time from the pick list because um, it has to be the exact correct formatting for the time. So I'm gonna do that. And I filled everything out I need to fill out here. So I'm gonna click next. I could also click children, but just to go through the process and make sure I don't miss anything or have to go back, I'm going to click the next button. And when I click next, it saves everything on that page. So here we have um, the children. This is like the, um, the old portal. And you need to put in the youngest age that, you can, that the program can serve and the oldest and then then children in each age group so i'm going to say none of those i'm going to say two of these and one okay so i filled all that out and it'll calculate it for me down here so it says 11 and then i'm going to say next and it will save it for me now this shows um, the workforce and um, in production, the user will click the get staff button. It's not necessarily connected right now um, because this is a test environment, but I'm gonna look and see, yes, this information is correct. And this is the only person I have in my program. So I'm gonna confirm that. And I do want to mention, you guys, there is a change to this page. Nor when you used to have to push the gray button on the existing um, sheet to get staff from PDIS, 
in the new system, when we transition, when we get to the workforce page, it'll auto refresh and automatically pull the most current information from PDIS. So as soon as you hit the page, it, it pulls the data from PDIS. The other thing that's a little bit different is um, it, if this is not the, the percentage that's required to submit for a level two this button here will be orange and that the means other... that you don't have the required hours sorry dorothy this is debbie the other, the other thing i wanted to point it out is we added some text for the family child care home provider um, there's been some confusion in the past whether they had to complete all 10 hours of the module themselves or whether if they had an assistance that assistance hours could count towards the 10. So we did add that right at the top of the application. Yeah, so that, that's right here. And it says that the hours can't be completed by the staff and count towards the, the percentage. So this page is complete. And as you can see over here, as I complete the page, it says completed. I'm gonna say next. Hey, Dorothy, before you leave yes. this page, we had a question about the button that says uh, to get staff from PDIS. Is there a need to push that button anymore? No, you don't need to push it. But let's say, for example, you get to this page and there's somebody missing. So you call PDIS and you say, oh, this person needs to be added or whatever uh, the situation is. And then they let's say they fix it for you. At that point, you would click the, the button again to get it to refresh. But otherwise, you would not need to push that. You only need to confirm the workforce by checking the box. Great, thank you. So as you can see, I went to the classroom tab and I went back to the workforce tab and it's saying, oh, you're not done with classroom. So it gives me this message, missing fields. So I can click back up here on classrooms and I have one classroom. So one of the bigger changes is now uh, licensing will be entering the classroom. So if it's a new program and there's no classroom in here, then they'll have to contact their licensing specialists to have the classroom added. Another um, new feature we have is um, you can check this Temp classroom temporarily temporarily not in use and there is this um, various reasons and depending on the reason let's say I say summer break and save it then I can I can go back and um, and it, and it asks me to confirm that I do want to make put it back in use again I say save but if I picked under construction or anything that would require licensing to come out and do an inspection, it will not let me check that, uncheck that box. So use that box wisely. <laughs> and this is a really important feature for us, um, mainly because we want all of our classroom information to match up with licensing's classroom information, and it would not give programs an option to maybe not add a classroom here that they didn't want observed. Um, and so it's just another double check for us to make sure all of our systems have the most accurate data. So if this was a, a child care center, there would be a field to where you would add your workforce um, as far as who's the lead teacher so it is helpful if you're not using this classroom then licensing will know right away when we're looking at the l2 and doing the desk audit that the reason a ect is not an early childhood teacher is not listed in here is because of the classroom's not in use so this will help streamline the process okay so i'm going to add a session to this classroom because there's only a session and and the instructions say here a classroom must have at least one session so i'm going to add the session and again you'll see and there's a message up here that says you need to complete all the fields that have the asterisk and you can see um, we've added uh, more required fields than we previously had 
So you have to make sure you fill out all of the, the um, required fields. So I'm gonna call this Playroom. And I'm gonna say Playroom, oops. Um, and you have to have a session or a description. And so again, I'm gonna put a start time in here. And an end time. Oops, that's a short session. And the number of students. And you'll see in here it gives the um, the number of students allowed, and that's designated by licensing. And birth date. The birth date of the oldest child. And there's scrolling involved here to get to years. And that picked that up from the um, profile, the Spanish there, where I could just click it or I could put a different language in here. Um, yeah, and the number of children with high needs. And then of course you have to select a teacher. So I can add this session. There it is. Okay, so Dorothy, we have a few questions. Um, okay. One, just verifying um, who puts in the session. The program puts in the session, just like okay. they do. The um, um, what? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the next question is: Is what is the turnaround time for licensing to add a classroom? Debbie, can Debbie, you, you want to? Um, yeah, I think Stephanie's on. I I don't have the answer to that off the top of my head. We need to be doing it obviously very very quickly. I don't know if we've put that into our um, standard operating procedures yet because it's so new. Stephanie, are you on? They have licensing staff has slowly been adding these um, as they have been out on visits and they will continue to do so. Um, once the request is given to the specialist, they will try to accommodate that as soon as possible so that we don't prevent the rating from from just hanging out kind of in limbo, um, but it will depend on their schedule. So this is actually a great, um, I'm glad this question came up because this is really good for like coaches. Um, I know people are not on site at the moment, but if they were working, you know, one-on-one -on -one with provider, and all of a sudden they get hung up because a classroom isn't there for some reason. Um, you know, that's just something to know that that could happen. Do be mindful, however, though, if this is an existing program and um, you guys have been working with them, most of their, well, all of their data is going to come over. It's just that some the verification has to happen from licensing on the classroom pages if there's something added. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right about that, right, Stephanie? Classrooms will still come over that are in there now. Yeah, it's a, it's the same right, they do. So all the all the information that that's currently in Salesforce is nothing's going to happen to that because um, this is just a new user interface. The data in the background is all the same. And the, exactly. as I mentioned earlier, classrooms are being added by licensing to make sure that the license the licensing um, classrooms are matching up to what is in QRAS. Yeah, so they so we've had a couple of instances where licensing goes to the facility and they say, oh, they say they have three classrooms and they only have two. So um, so then we have to go in and, and manually fix that or we'll have a home provider who, you know, is is identifying the the bedroom where naps are by infants are, you know, happening as a classroom. So that's <laughs> that isn't necessary. 
So we've had we have had to, you know, do some manual corrections on those things. And licensing can escalate things, Karen. If you're if we're in a rating and um, you know a, a specialist needs to quickly add a classroom, I think that we can definitely do that. Okay, so the next question is they were wondering if there's going to be a formal guide or training document for individuals to refer to after today. Yes, so we, you guys obviously don't have access to this right now and won't until the 14th when we actually do the cutover, but we have multiple um, guides that are being, you know, finalized right now, pretty much all developed. Um, it's so much like the same thing that you guys are used to. It just looks a little different, um, but there are those few um, little tweaks about, you know, making sure certain fields are mandatory, have to be filled out, and and the changes with um, the setup of the classroom. So, um, but yes, we are gonna send those out to you guys before the 14th, um, more than likely with the recording of this. Um, we'll get it sent out once we've got thumbs up on everyone having looked at all of them. And um, we also just, I just want to do a shout out as well. We've had a few QI NAVs um, help us with this and go through some of these guides with us. So that's been very, very good feedback um, as well as a shout out to Stacy Petty, who's helped us with some language. We're still working on getting those changes. Um, but do know that some of your, um, some of your colleagues have been, you know, in the system and giving us feedback. Okay, so Karen also uh, Lilith um, uh, said asked that if she could get a copy of those so she can post them in right. EC Connect. Yeah, we'll be sending uh, those out support. shortly. Yeah. Because we're we're making updates to you know as yeah. from the feedback to make from, from Stacy and Kristen, um, we want to make sure that everything's in its final format before we send out the the um, guides. Okay, um, so next question is, uh, sometimes the numbers enrolled are different than the capacity. How will this be handled? So the, the capacity is the license capacity and nothing requires them to have six children, for example. So they can put, that's where the session comes in and then they put the number of students enrolled there and that, that they enter themselves. Yeah, we're well aware that the numbers don't match capacity. There's AM, PM sessions. Sometimes there's three days a week, two days a week. So none of that will, will have any kind of um, bearing on this. They just put in the number of children that they have current, currently at that moment in time, just like it is now. Okay, and then next question is, is what was the, the reasoning behind uh, having licensing add the classrooms? Yeah, I think we've covered that. Okay. Right. Okay. So moving right along, as you can see, it still says missing fields, but when I click next, because I made that correction by adding a session, it now says completed. Here we have um, high needs. This is very much like what we have in the current um, user interface. And so I'm going to put a number in here. And then when I say next, It'll bring me, it'll say high needs completed and it'll bring me to the quality improvement page. And this is a little bit different. Um, there's more instructions here. Um, and you'll see a lot of these in the interest of not making the users scroll and scroll and scroll. We've made these expandable sections where there's more information. Um, but in this case, this program has no quality improvement goals. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to select a category and a subcategory. And when it, it should be completed by. And then the criteria. And in the interest of me not typing, I'm going to just paste that in there. And I'm going to add it to the plan. So you'll see up here we have, let's say I have multiple um, QIPs in different categories. This will sort them by category so you can look and see which ones there are. And additionally, if there's um, a 
QIP that's been completed, if they, they want to mark it complete, then they can, um, that'll go into a different section where they would say completed QIP and any completed QIPs will show here. So I'm going to go back to that. So um, program users will be able to mark them complete and edit them which I believe that's a uh, new functionality. We're also working with our developers to get this in a printable format. That has been a request. We would like to see it as well, but they have not. Um, it's going to be a future enhancement, so watch for that, and we'll keep you informed. We also added text that I wanted to point out. This is Debian licensing, so I coordinate level two, and. One of the biggest reasons that we're a lot of times not able to quickly re-award a level two when they're applying again is there's confusion on whether they have to create a new quality improvement plan, and they do. So we tried to be um, real open on that and add that right into our text so that providers know when they go to renew the level two, they need to add at least one new QIP goal. Okay, so then once once they've added the goal, then they can say next again. And then we have this is, you know, all the same text that we currently have. Um, Karen, do you want to talk about the changes that are coming down the road on this? Yeah, sure. Um, so as we were preparing to roll into um, ERS3, and we've been doing, of course, a lot of training in that, we're also updating, well, we have updated the level two standards to be a little bit more in line with um, a program, um, you know, pursuing what, what would be then ERS three as the next step. So um, Debbie, Charlie um, really worked hard to um, get these new standards updated. That is something else that you will see in a future enhancement. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it done with this rollout in December. So in March, um, we will do a communication. Of course, you guys will be the first to know um, that those standards are going to be updated. Nothing crazy, um, but just a nice, um, a nice change in some of the language. And uh, Karen, can I just point out that one of the biggest changes is family child care home providers will be completing this section. Um, in the past, with, with FICRS, uh, licensing had embedded a lot of those quality indicators right into the licensing rule. Now that we have a new version that will be coming out for the Family Child Care Home um, ERS tool, the FICRS, we will have the Family Child Care Home providers do the quality indicators section. I also want to point out there was a, there was a question on the last page, um, will current QIP goals transfer to the new format? Yes, everything that's in a provider's current um, system now will transfer. So I just I don't want to I can't say that enough because I think that is a fear of everyone when somebody goes um, through a transition like that. So thanks, Nicole, for asking that question um, and do uh, help us um, continue to pr put providers at ease that they won't lose any of their data because we're not getting a new database. It's the same database, it's just a different user yeah. interface. So it's an updated user interface and it is on the back end as well. So um, something to point out about this part is uh, providers can select no on one of the indicators, but you're required to you know, explain why you're answering no here and you won't be able to proceed without entering a comment. So in the interest of um, speed, since there are a lot of boxes to check, I'm going to check these two boxes. <laughs> I'm cheating. And then um, you can see here, everything's been filled out. So I'm gonna click on application summary. And here it says, check to confirm all information within this application is accurate and up to date. Once your application is approved, you'll receive an email. So once I check this box here, then this box turns blue and I can click the um, submit button. 
and then when I click this, it will return me to the home page. Now we talked about before, if you have applications in progress um, here, it says the application is under review and you can go through and you can view the information, but not edit it. Um, so we have another thing that, that's new and I only have screenshots for you. Um, let me let me know if this, can you see this? Yes. Okay. So a uh, new function is that when a licensing specialist reviews the application, they can write notes to the program user for things that need to be um, changed or updated on their um, application in, some, in the case where something's missing. And so um, they'll get an email that there, there's a note from their licensing specialist and they, when they come back to their um, application, it will show which sections need attention. So that, that shows on the left side here, and they'll be able to edit these, these items, and there will be more, um, more elaboration here as to what yeah. needs to be updated. Go ahead. So yeah, the, the, the program will actually get an email with all of the notes that the licensing specialist may have added, and they'll be specific to each um, of the sections of the application. And then there, the note will also be able to be seen on those sections when the provider goes into them. So there's a little link to the note on the section that says needed more information so that they can review that note again, um, just to see what was needed um, by the specialist to continue that application. Um, and then, Dorothy, I don't know if you want me to proceed or not. It sounds like you're going yeah, there go now. Ahead. Keep going, keep going. Okay. <laughs> So basically the email is sent out, then the provider will come back in here to their dashboard. Basically the email is a trigger to them to say, hey, um, please sign back into your dashboard and take a look at the application. And then they can see those same notes on those sections. And then once they've done whatever they needed to do to fix what they needed to do or let the specialist know what they've done, then they come back into those notes and they will mark them as um, resolved. You can see the little blue button there. And once they do that, it's actually gonna trigger an email alert to the specialist to tell them, hey, this provider has responded um, and resolved your, your comment that you added um, for them to complete. And Stephanie, this is Debbie. I think also with this new enhancement, the QI navigators can also see these notes. Is that right? That is not a question for me. I know they sit on the dashboard. <laughs> um, so the specialist sees the notes, the provider sees the notes. Um, I'm guessing that they are stored on the back end as well. Um, we can certainly get the answer to that. Um, to, to that was kind that. of our original thought because that way the QI navigators can see right away what, what needs to be done um, so that they can assist with getting this program uh, level two as quickly as possible. So yeah, hopefully we can look into that more. Sorry. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Okay, so we have a couple of other questions. Um, one, there was a question of estimated time for review from licensing for level two application. Has that changed, I guess would be, I guess that would be the main question. Has that yeah. changed? No, this, this will, we hope speed up the process, but we haven't changed our requirements for how soon they need to be reviewed. We also get a report um, once a week that I review as a level two coordinator um, to make sure that we're reviewing these in a, in a timely manner. What, what I find quite often is we review them in a timely manner, but we're not able to award it because there's things on the application not done. So this is really what's driving these changes in the applications. So we can um, hopefully get these awarded in a much quicker um, time frame. Okay. Um, next question is on the uh, the assessment, the self assessment. Um, can the, and a level two still be earned with, if one of the questions is no, is answered can I, with a no? I can explain that. This is Debbie again. So we intentionally created a comment box for the programs to go in and explain why they would not be able to meet that indicator. So for example, let's use a Montessori program. Um, we all know that Montessori programs, 
philosophically their curriculum they don't have blocks um, a lot of times the traditional block area in the classroom so for level two we didn't want that to be a barrier we didn't want them to not be able to obtain level two if they didn't have past requirement so it, it can be waived um, at level two so yes they can still meet the indicator overall and become a level two even if there are philosophical differences All right, um, so the next question we have, oh goodness, just jumped ahead on me. Um, so in the uh, QIP, Harlem, stop. Sorry guys, my dog is, is, is bothering me. Um, so they were questioning uh, of why in the, in the QIP, why there isn't a way to put in an other goal other than what's in our program guide. I just think that we're not seeing everything right now because of the um, the test environment. So we'll go back and just double check and make sure it's mirroring the way it's currently doing. Because I think that right now we have an other category. So we'll, we'll go back and double check on that. Okay, we had one more question. I want to say that this was already answered, but I'll just put it out there because it was it just popped up. Does the system allow the licensing specialist to communicate items missing in the L2 application to help programs resolve that missing item? Yes. So there's a comment box that the specialist can write a note that explains for each section um, exactly what needs to be done. And then that is emailed over to the provider so they can see it in the email or they can log into the account and see it. All right, and it looks like uh, last question is, uh, is will it still be required for providers to update their QIP annually? Yeah, I think I said that um, a, a little bit ago. So we added text. Um, oh, Dorothy's on the page right now. So see that little text that says you must have at least one QIP goal to submit. If you're reapplying for level two, be sure to update and add your new improvement goals. So this was one of the main reasons that we're not able to quickly um, re-rate a program for level two is the program's missing this goal. Um, so hopefully this this will speed up things. So I think what Lilith might be referring to is um, annually we ask that the provider update their application before they apply for quality improvement. And yes, they would just need to make sure that their goals are current. There's nothing in the system that's going to prevent them from moving forward. But that's also part of, you know, the QI navigator and the provider or the coach and the provider having those conversations to make sure their goals are current so that when they do make purchases or get coaching um, based on their uh, QIP plan, that it's current. All right, um, that's all the questions thus far. Okay, should we move on to um, a level two to a level three through five or alt path? Um, let's do level two to level three. Um, okay. And then we also had a request if we're uh, reviewing the QIP funds tab, which I believe we are. Yes, we are. And that's that's another um, feature that we included that um, if a program has uh, <laughs> if a program has just completed their um, shoot, just completed their uh, level two application, they're able to submit for funds. So because their application is complete, they can just click that uh, QIP. Ta uh, tab I'll show it to you. Let me log in as this other user. Okay, so if I go back to the quality improvement um, yeah, this is making me do it, but you can you can go directly to submit for QI funds from there. In this case, it's wanting me to start a new application because the application isn't complete. So let's go 
back up here and I'm going to do an L3 through 5 application. And typically, um, some of the information is already in here for these programs because they previously rated. So, what we encourage people to do is just review the information. So you can see here they have their times in, they have um, this program is open from August to May because they're just school year. So this page is complete. So you can go and say next and it'll show you that the program details are completed. Let's say I wanna update some of this information, make this two, make this 10, and then if I say next, it'll be complete and saved. And it's thinking and a thought. Okay, so I look here. They have this, you can see this is a center. So this says has a different message than it did for the, the last one we were working on, which was a home. And it talks about the 75% uh, of your staff, which they have that number. So they have the green button. And I'm looking here and I have my staff is appearing. So I click the button and confirm and say next. Um, we're on classrooms. So let's say I want to edit a classroom. And verify this is this is another issue that um, people are going to have to look out for because um, they might say, oh, I've got sessions, I'm good. But since there are required fields that maybe weren't filled out the last time they completed their application, it if they click on next when the classrooms look OK, um, they may get a message saying they have missing fields. So it's one of these fields that previously were not required but are currently required that needs to be completed. And so I am going to change this number. And I'm going to switch teachers. And I'll save this. Uh, that's another thing. If if there's missing information, if you save it or, or if you fill it out, this button will not be blue unless it's complete. So I'll save that one. I'm going to say next. I'm going to leave high needs the way it is and say next. And I am going to add a new quality improvement. Let's see. Let's see. Um, if they have any complete so let's for example go back and we can complete a qip so you can see that in action yeah, you can complete one and then add so yeah so i'll say mark complete here make sure it verifies it and say mark complete and then if i go back to this completed qip i'll have one in there now and there it is so back to the current and i'm going to add a new quality improvement goal and select the criteria get some text in there and add it to the plan so you can see the new so if you look here i have one in the optional category and if i go to the workforce i don't have any because i um i completed that other one child health there's a child health so it shows them by category on this page so that i'm good to go there i'm going to say next and i'm going to double check all my indicators and i have yeses here 
Maybe I'm going to change this one to a no. And then I have to enter a comment. And then all I have to do is say net. Oops, I lied. Um, where's the save button? Oh, there. You the just click away. Will save. Save just so you, just so you guys know, I don't know if you caught it. The the note came up in like a red outline. It's very subtle, and then it saves itself automatically once the provider puts something in. It changes to blue. So anytime the provider clicks off of that or goes somewhere else, it is saving it automatically. Whatever they typed in there. So there's no actual save button for the comments. It just yeah. is auto saving as you go. You click away, and then it's there. And then you can see these have notes. So there's a note there, and there's a note there. This one has no notes, so there's a zero there. And then I'm done. So when the button's grayed out, you know you're done. So then I'm going to click the application summary, check that I confirm, and submit. Now, the thing I wanted to show you before after it's done thinking okay is at this point because i just completed my application i can apply for qip funds so i go sorry i go here quality improvement and if i go here i'm good to go see and if i and ignore if I, the picture we're getting a new one <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we don't no, like we the don't picture. like the stretchy picture. <laughs> <laughs> and and of course, when once we're connected, you know, we don't we don't, we're not connected in the sandbox to um, EC Connect. So nothing. Else. Yeah, that's where that information about EC Connect will pop up. The information about your personalized uh, council will pop up, just as it does now. And just as an aside, we still have a help um, button and we still have links to information. So we will, as time goes by, we'll, we can add and remove things here. This also has um, information about your council, their phone number for the, um, this one's not the council, this is the, but it will have again the test environment doesn't have everything hooked yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then also here is QRS and PDIS contact information. So that one is good to go. And so it shows that the it's in progress. So back to home. So that one's done. Any questions about that? I am not seeing any questions. Okay. Um, I'm going to log out of there and I'm going to go to the alternative pathway. Don't give up yet. I'm going to give up. <laughs> Um, let me do this. There we Okay, so start an application. And as I said before, you can either go to this button to start a new application. This time I'm going to click here to start a new application. Assistance, 
right off the bat, it says, ah, you're missing a field. So I'm going to add the field. And since this program's previously had an application, and things all filled out for me, so I can say next. Some children. And next. And this looks good to me. They need a session. So Right, and add a session. Good here. Quality improvement. This one needs a QIP. So we're good there. And now it takes you right to documentation. And if any of you have ever helped a program do a an alternative pathway on the current um, application, this is not necessarily an easy thing to find. So I'm gonna, oops. I'm gonna name the file, then I'm gonna select it a type of um, which uh, organization provided the alternative pathway. And then I click the upload file. And we'll pick Stonehenge. And then it gives you the progress. And once it's complete, you can click the done. Additionally, you can drag files into this area which I've only tried once, but it, it worked. So then I want to add the document. And it shows up down here. Now it's like, oh, I didn't want Stonehenge. <laughs> you can delete the, the document and start again. I wanted Baby llama. Done. Add document. And there, there we have it. So now we're all good to go. So we can go application summary. We can check our box. And our button turns blue. And we return to the home page. So does anyone have any questions about that?
anyone? I don't see any new ones in the chat in box. The chat? Okay. All right. Karen, do you have any? I just okay. wanted to ask. <laughs> Other Jackie, things. you had asked the question about PDIS. Was um, were you was that is just because it's shut down right now? Was the question? Um, I know you're on mute. I don't know if you can unmute, but if I didn't answer that the way um, you were wanting me to, then let me know. But basically, yes, everything will work the way it's currently working. Um, the portal for the credential piece is currently shut down, but expected to be opened up any moment now. Um, but everything else will work uh, with PDIS, still be able to get staff, still be able to, you know, view whether a staff completed an IPDP, all of those things will still be on the, on the application page. So hopefully that helps. All right. Cool. Was there any um, was there anything else, um, Dorothy, that we didn't cover yet on the demo? I mean, we expected you know, it to take about an hour. Yeah, um, and and then just on the back end, it's it just looks a little bit different. But I mean, we still have all the apps installed, and you can look at recently viewed, and then the big difference on the. Um, on the interface here is you only as you scroll down you don't have your related lists at the bottom they show up here so here's the um for qi navigators that are going to be joining us next week this is the information that we're going to cover in that session just how to kind of you know find your programs and and all of that information um and so, you know, other than other than this particular portion, if you've got a QI Navigator login, we will hope that you'll join us next week. And um, if not, we'll again, we'll record that and um, provide you with a bit more um, of an overview of how to kind of navigate this backside since it does look a little different. Okay. Good. Well, thanks you guys so much for joining us today. Um, keep the questions coming. You can reach out to your coordinator if we didn't get to something that you were, you know, really wanting to ask, or if you're planning to attend with us next week, bring your question. Um, we have just a very short window right now to make a few tweaks, and that's what we're focused on, um, which uh, has been going pretty smoothly so far. So. Um, really appreciate all the um, feedback, really appreciate all the comments, and certainly appreciate our testers, which have been just absolutely fabulous. So thanks so much. And I guess we'll sign off. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Hey, Michelle, are you still on? <laughs>